And these are ancient insights into justice and anger. As we've said, political correctness is focused on justice and compassion. And the ancient philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Xenophon, Seneca, and so on, thought a lot about justice. But they didn't often speak about justice in and of itself. They saw it as one of four cardinal virtues. And the word for virtue in Greek is erite, and that means excellence. So it's something you cultivate. It's an excellence you cultivate. So the, and the four cardinal virtues, when you look at how they talked about them, were often described um, or seen as interdependent. Cardinal comes from the Latin cardo, and it means that on which something turns or depends, like a hinge. And the idea is that a good life for the individual and the community depends on cultivating these virtues. And you have to do all of them. What are they? Justice, wisdom, moderation, and courage. And a virtue, the definition of a virtue, it's a way of behaving that's conducive to happiness over time. They have to be cultivated, and they have to be practiced. Virtues are a way of, vices are ways of behaving that are conducive to unhappiness. And they're also practiced. Now note, this is an important point. Compassion was not thought to be a virtue. It's only fairly recently, in some respects, that compassion was thought has become a virtue. For the ancients, compassion was a feeling, something available immediately, almost to anyone, to a child. Thus, it wasn't something that was cultivated. It was part of the raw material of being a human being. I'm aware that there are Eastern practices, there are compassion meditations. There, in the East, compassion was something that was treated like a virtue. So here's justice. Justice is a good thing, so it's understood as a virtue. So it would seem the more justice we have, the better, the more the merrier. And this indeed is the assumption of most social justice activism. How, how can you have too much of a good thing? The ancients were interested in balance, and they saw that the virtues do not stand each alone. And in fact, by themselves, they can actually and sometimes even be problematic. They observed that the practice of justice, for instance, without wisdom or moderation, often led to terrible consequences, even in the, in the democracies. It's a painful truth. History's greatest crimes have been committed in the name of justice. In the name of justice, the Spanish Inquisition. In the name of justice, taking this man, an Anabaptist, and burning him alive for heresy. In the name of rights, our treasured human rights. In the name of the rights of man, the French Revolution's reign of terror. And this, ISIS, it's all about justice, according to them. So for the Greeks, justice by itself could spin out of control, and moderation was needed. This is a picture of Delphi where our ancient writings tell us nothing in excess was inscribed. So moderation is needed for justice because justice is so closely related in practice to the wish to punish. It can be harsh. It can be vengeful. Even those of us nice people who restrain ourselves from unjust acts often feel a strong resentment towards lawbreakers and wish to get even. We say, he got away with it kind of implying we would have liked to have done it, but we held back. The wish to punish is the wish to hurt. And Socrates points this out in several dialogues very effectively. So justice must be tempered. And it's tempered by moderation and wisdom. And the Bible would argue by mercy. This is a side of it. Justice can become suddenly harsh in groups. And Freud pointed out that people in groups can readily regress and express terrible hostility. One of the things he said in group psychology and the analysis of the ego was in groups, people delegate their conscience to their chosen leader of the time. 
And if the leader sanctions aggression, suddenly civilized people can rapidly become unbounded by conscience, and you can see the extraordinary aggression that can be lurking. Think of anti-Semitism in the Middle Ages. There wasn't just the sinners who sanctioned setting Jewish homes, synagogues, and people on fire, but the saints. And once a saint says kill, there's little stopping the crowd from becoming cruel because in a way their conscience is permitting it. Now, we just saw private jump, uh, justice Simpson style. Private justice is relevant today um, because of changes, I think, in the various tribunals and legal codes um, that we're seeing. Um, which are privileging subjectivity. Um, private justice can escalate false claims. One key reason historically for having public a public justice system was to put an end to private feuds and revenge bloodbaths when people took justice in their own hands. Of course, the original justice was people doing justice in their own hands. So private feuds, of course, are driven by each party's subjective sense they're offended and their non-systematic interpretation of events. And public justice, at its best, attempts to use more objective evidentiary criteria than private justice. But the PC justice tribunals, by reintroducing the subjective sense of grievance that Professor Peterson has spoken about as a criterion for human rights violations, actually, I would argue, returns us to the perils of private justice, but now with public approval and public imperture. Now, why is wisdom necessary? Wouldn't it be nice if those kids who are shutting everyone down actually went to university and said, I'd like to be wise? It would actually help their cause, because if you are not wise, you really cannot know what is right and wrong. And you may think you, it's an easy thing to tell all the time, but there's so many disputes about justice through the world that clearly people are having trouble sorting that out. And in Plato's Republic, which is also called On the Just, he begins it um, with Socrates asking people to define justice. People are demanding it. Say, OK, tell me what you want. And none of them can define it. They all fall apart. I can't talk about it here today. But that's the brilliant beginning of Plato's Republic. And ultimately, he shows us that justice requires balance in the entire personality and in the city. Uh, and it relates to moderation and wisdom and courage. Now, why courage? Without courage, you can't stand up for what is just. And not everyone agrees on what outcome is just, so there is a fight. And entering that fight requires grit, and it entails risk. Now, I ask you to think of all the university administrators of our day who have caved in across North America and let one lecture after another be shut down without a fight, betraying their mission, their university mission, and their mission to their students. Sometimes they agree with shutting these things down. But I think more often it's um, a lack of courage uh, and careerism mixed together. But physical courage is not enough to guarantee justice because you need intellectual courage to have wisdom. Wisdom requires the willingness to undertake free inquiry and take apart and examine your own soothing fictions and beliefs, face human morality, mor mortality, and your limits. Mill, who drew very much from Socrates, argued that free inquiry was the major basis, or one of the major bases for freedom of speech. So ultimately, the virtues are independent. Justice depends on courage, moderation, and wisdom. And wisdom depends on intellectual courage. For the ancients, politics is not the only way, and at times, not even the best way to improve the world. The cultivation of your own virtue can have a great impact on others. What community would not be better off with people who cultivate, cultivate wisdom, moderation, courage, and justice? 